You're listening to Work It Mommy, where the goal is for all women, no matter your age or stage in life, single, married, adult, mature adult, we can all be the best versions of ourselves. But if you happen to be a mom, be the best mom ever and maintain our sanity while we do it. Okay, so this one today is kind of a tricky one. So we all are familiar with the term narcissism or a narcissist. And typically what comes to mind is that person who has to be the center of attention, that person that kind of is loud and brash and cares about themselves above all others, takes no responsibility for any wrongdoing that they do or any acceptance of anything bad or different or negative about themselves. They see themselves as the world's most amazing person and um, often will put others down to elevate themselves. The only thing about that, though, is most of the time we only think of narcissists as being quote unquote, extroverts. So there is um, a link between narcissism and being extroverted. But again, if you look at like a psychology chart, we're all supposed to have these little pieces of everything that kind of flow in balance and jive together. So there's a tiny bit of a narcissist in all of us. And if left unchecked, it grows into a that is just the dominant part of our personality. But I want to talk today about these uh, covert narcissists because we oftentimes overlook these people and we don't realize that we're actually being treated very badly. A covert narcissist is someone who calls themselves an introvert. I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert. But then their behaviors are something that can be classified as passive aggressive. Um, They have little interest in others. They're self-absorbed. That is also narcissism. Okay, but again, it doesn't get that label in society. It gets the label of being an introvert, which, again, don't want to get mixed up here. You can be an introvert without being a narcissist. Absolutely. There's a little bit of introvert in all of us as well. And we make sure that that jives in balance. But regarding this, um, when someone is an overt introvert, then it could mean, um, number one, that they are suffering with some mental illness. And then number two, that they actually may have an inflated level of narcissism. So this one can be quite problematic. And it kind of takes you by surprise, because when we're looking for narcissists, we're looking for the crazy loud people. Like that's, you know, typically where your mind goes. But it's also the people who are introverted um, to the point that it's unhealthy and eliminating others. So um, let's get some further information on this. And to do that, I did see this article on Psychology Today. That is a popular um, website for this stuff. And it's a dot com. So it's commerce based primarily, but it is a good read and has some good information. So the title of this is Seven Signs of a Covert Narcissist. So again, it makes the point that narcissism is often associated with many external manifestations, including attention seeking, grandstanding, superficial charm, lack of reliability, uh, boundary violation, manipulation and other traits. However, not all narcissists are openly grandiose and outwardly intrusive. Researchers and authors have written about the introverted narcissist, very variously identified as the covert, covert, excuse me, narcissist, the hypersensitive narcissist, the closet narcissist, and the vulnerable narcissist. This subtype of narcissism is more hidden and can carry the name self-conceit and negative connotation as their extroverted counterparts. Okay, so it's a big problem. So you can't say, well, I'm not, you know, loud and out there and all these things. So that's not me. It is. It works both ways. And what I try to get people to understand from my limited understanding of it all, I'm not a professional. I just have an interest in this stuff is all of the personality traits and the way we work, um, our personality, 
uh, is made up of several different components and they all just have to kind of drive together in balance. And when you're mentally healthy, you're able to bring out that extrovert when you need it and you're able to be that introvert when you need to be too. Um, but it's when we let our personality go unchecked that one becomes more dominant than the other. And then now we're unbalanced. OK, so it's all about balance. Now, let's keep on reading. So it's important to point out that many introverts are not narcissistic. Um, the ones who are, however, may have a way of influencing others around them to feel off balanced and insecure. What extrovert what both extro extrovert and introvert narcissists have in common is their employment of an outer veneer or superficial super superiority, excuse me, to disguise their inner sense of vulnerability. So while an extroverted narcissist will say in so many ways that they're better than you, basically, an introverted narcissist will strongly hint at it. And what I've seen with people with this is, you know, um, they may say things like, oh, I'll see if I have the time. Like, I'll see if I have the time to like deal with you and fit me into my schedule because I'm so grandiose. I'm so important. There's no reason that I would ever consider changing my life around to fit you. No way. So, you know, it's usually um, kind of like snide. Um, it's a bit vague. Vagueness um, can also be a part of this because when people are directly um, not saying much about how they feel, it's be usually because they have how they feel in mind already and they just don't want to say it. And they're smart enough to know that if they say it in a certain way, they're going to look really self-centered and they don't want to. So they kind of say something that gives you that idea without giving you all of it. For me, just give me all of it. I ain't got time to sit up here and figure out what you're doing with all that. You know, come on. So, um, yeah, that is, in, you know, one way that I have seen that play out. Now, number one, it says uh, quiet smugness and superiority. Many extroverted narcissists are fairly easy to spot because they're grandiose and they have the mannerism and all that. But introvert narcissists, on the other hand, can be more difficult to pinpoint, at least at the outset. They tend to observe judgmentally rather than act. So it's that person at the party who doesn't interact with anyone, but sits there and looks at everybody, not like, oh, I wish I could do that, but oh, look at how awful they are. Or maybe everybody's dancing and they can't dance. And instead of appreciating the people that can, they sit back and make fun of how every how badly everyone's dancing. You know what I mean? So um, and that can just seem like innocent fun. It seems harmless. Oh, they're being funny. They're making fun of people. It's not. It, it's coming from a place of insecurity. And so you have to, to understand um, what is happening. So it says um, they would rather uh, listen half heartedly rather than speak. Now, that's an interesting one. So someone who kind of listens to you, they got that really blank glance stare on and they're even smiling at you and they're not saying much. You may be explaining, oh, this happened and that happened and um you know, whatever, maybe it's not a coworker and you're saying, well, this is how I think it should be done. And they're going, oh, mm -hmm. all right. Well, I see what you mean. I'll, I'll think about it and get back to you. And then they never do uh, things like that. Or maybe it's someone who's a potential friend and um, you go, hey, you want to, you know, go out and uh, grab a bite? Oh, you know, I just, um, oh, well, you know, I'll see if I have time and get back to you. And then they never do. Okay. Um, so it's, it's really just kind of strange. Okay. So again, they were rather kind of observe judgmentally than act. They're very half-hearted type of people never can give you like a definitive answer, but just kind of like him and hawing. And, um, it also can be classified as someone who is kind of aloof. Um, they're very detached. Um, 
and they just don't really engage much, you know, almost in their own little world, like, oh, this makes me happy. And I did this today and I did that today. And oh, I just stay in my own little world. People who say that to you, I'm in my own little world. You know, they're there. They have an overinflated view of themselves. And so they want to just stay to themselves because, you know, no one else in their mind is really worth their while unfortunately. And that's sad because I think people are awesome. I love interacting with people, you know, it's like a cool thing to do. So, um, you know, it just keeps going, but basically there's a lot of dismissive gestures, um, lots of eye rolls and sighs, high distractibility. So if you're talking to someone and they're looking around at other people, um, not really engaging with you, that is always something good, uh, something good, something to look out for. Um, maybe they walk past you and don't say anything. Um, that's very passive aggressive. When you know someone and you walk right past them, maybe you're at a grocery store or something like that. Um, it can be a, a sign um, of superiority. Um, there could be a little bit of narcissism attached. Some people are just shy, um, but it, it 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 can be in certain instances. Okay, so very dismissive. You know, I'm just kind of like, oh, I'll just have to see how it goes, and I'll just have to see what works for me, and you know, very nonchalant, dismissive um, overall tone. Um, then when they do speak, their comments tend to be critical and judgmental, focusing on their own conceded views. Um, they have almost a seemingly impenetrable smugness and, um, just, it's all really a front because inside they're very vulnerable and they haven't been able to, to deal with their feelings and get the help that they need. Now, number two point that the article mentions, self-absorption. One of the most common characteristics of an introverted narcissist is a sense of withdrawn self-centeredness. While many introverts are more quiet but good listeners, introvert narcissists tend to listen and poor listeners. Often they will make quick assessments of a person or situation, find it uninteresting, flawed, or unworthy of their attention, and mentally tune out or block you out. While most mature adults are capable of recognizing the nuances of issues and giving people the benefit of the doubt, introvert narcissists tend to focus on what they selfishly want and find agreeable. OK, anything else they just label boring or stupid or they're just uninterested. OK, um, very interesting. Number three, lack of empathy. This one is huge. And I may add from everything that I typically see on this subject, a lack of empathy. Once you start losing empathy or you have like no no love for like um, people or like human kind, you really are headed towards some serious mental illness when you get to that point, because empathy is something that is deeply intrinsically just intertwined into who we are as people. So if you are like walking down the street and you see someone fall and your gut reaction isn't to be like, oh, let me go help. Like you don't have empathy for someone who just fell down or maybe someone's going through a serious situation. You're like, oh, they just had surgery. I don't have time to deal with it. I'm just going to like pretend they didn't tell me that and like not bring them food or do anything. You know what I mean? Like it's um, a lack of empathy. So, you know, you, you, that can be quite serious. OK, so um, they give an example here of it, too, in the article. It says you're sick. But what about driving me to the mall? <laughs> So it's like um, no consideration for anyone else. Um, and I can recall being in a friendship with someone like this where it was like, you know, um, I kind of show for I kind of put myself in the situation of being this person chauffeur. Um, shame on me for not realizing that I was just kind of being used and um, I can recall saying something like, oh, you know, I, I really need to do this today. You know, I'm sorry. I won't be able to do it. Well, could you just like take me like it won't take you long. Just do it anyway. And you're just like, did you hear what I said? I just told you that like this major issue is going on. And you're just like, oh, um, 
I may add that is also the person that never like if you give them a ride and they like never give you gas money or like ever offer to drive that person who's always bumming a ride and never offers you a ride. They are narcissists. They not might not be an extroverted narcissist, but they are definitely a narcissist. OK, now passive aggressiveness. Introverted narcissists deal with disagreeable people or circumstances in a passive aggressive way. Upon receiving a reasonable request from you, they may say, okay, yes, of course, as you wish. Um, Then either do nothing or behave however they please. Okay, so that means, you know, um, well, let me just continue with the article. They put it better than I will. It says when you inquire why they didn't follow through on an arrangement, they may shrug it off with an excuse or say nonchalantly that their way was better or they had something more important going on. So this translates into you invite someone somewhere and they say yes, and then um, they don't show up. Um, and then when you're like, Hey, where were you? They were just like, Oh, I couldn't make it. No real reasoning, no real, like, Hey, thank you so much for the invitation. I got really sick and I wasn't able to make it, or I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. I I want to be there. I hope I can join you next time. Or this is always a sign for me when you invite someone somewhere And then you, maybe they can't make it and it's legit, you know, something came up, an emergency or whatever. They usually, where I am from, will say, hey, you know, the next time they would invite you somewhere because then they really want to send a message like, hey, I appreciate that you invited me somewhere. I couldn't make it that time. So now I'm going to make that up by inviting you somewhere. So like, hey, we're supposed to go out to dinner this one night. You couldn't make it. You know what? Next time, you know, I'm going to invite you out. And they do. They follow through. So it's the person that um, kind of never uh, follows through with things that they agree to do regarding um, relationships and places they're supposed to go. Um, And even their jobs, you know, they tell their boss, yeah, I did it. And then they didn't. And then when the boss asks, hey, yo, you didn't turn on, turn in this document on time. They're like, oh yeah, I was going to do that. And um, yeah, I'll get it to you. And then they never do. So that's a real problem. Okay. Number five, highly sensitive. Psychiatrist Glenn Gabbard notes that some introverted narcissists are exquisitely sensitive. They tend to be offended by any signs of real perceived slights and handle criticism poorly. In fact, in the face of negative feedback, some introvert narcissists will defend an increased sense of superior smugness with dismiss with dismal uh, fight while others will respond with sullen, withdrawn flight. Okay. Typically they will not let on as to how much the negative, negative experience bothers them and instead use their well-rehearsed aloofness to continue their, um, what they do. Okay. So again, being highly sensitive, um, can be a problem. Okay. Number six, Uh, They are the misunderstood special person. So the person who constantly says, I'm special, I'm one of a kind, I'm ahead of my time, Um, I'm so unique, no one understands me, you know, I'm so smart, I'm above everybody else. They might not say these exact like words, but that's the idea you get based on the things that they say. So they're basically putting themselves in a category separate than everybody else. Um, and, and usually this is, comes in the form of very unsolicited, random displays of like knowledge, like, oh, do you know that so-and-so scientist in 1575 did blah di da di da And you're just like, why are you saying this right now? So they want to kind of prove that they're in this class of their own and that they're smarter than everybody else. OK, uh, number seven impersonal and difficult relationships. As mentioned earlier, part of the introvert narcissist insecurity is the inability to genuinely connect with people. I've seen this one time and time again, and I pick up on it pretty quick now. It's taken me like forever. Um, 
But now I, when I pick up on it, I just go, hmm, is this something that I'm going to be able to continue with? Because I just need to be able to, to really connect. So, um, yeah, we all have to do that kind of an assessment. But um, anyway, uh, to this extent, the aloofness and our smugness um, sever serve, excuse me, as a defense mechanism, keeping people away. Less the narcissist is exposed for her or his or her interpersonal inadequacies. Some introvert narcissists narrowly focus on self-absorbing work, technology, social networking, small cliques, books, games, fantasies, and other endeavors to minimize wider human interactions. These activities may also help them enact their covert self-important personas. Okay. So sometimes it's the person that, you know, they have like their hobbies and things that they do. It's like, I just do this, you know, I, I'm not interested in anything else. Don't bring anything else to me. Like this is all that I do. They are like a completely engrossed in whatever it is that they do. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having hobbies. It's good to have hobbies. As a matter of fact, it's mentally healthy to have hobbies. But when it becomes a tool to become withdrawn into yourself, to keep yourself so busy that you don't have time to deal with, you know, your relationships and deal with people in society, that it takes first place over everything that's when you know, okay, this is something that um, is kind of, you know, a little bit off here. Okay. They also like small clicks. They may have like one person or just a handful of people. Maybe it's some sort of a little club and some, again, some of this stuff is healthy, but again, everything revolves around balance with mental health and physical health, balance, 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 balance. That's all. We all, um, to some degree, display these okay sometimes when I'm looking over things I'll read it and I'll be like girl what in the world I just did this yesterday I just said something to somebody yesterday or I just acted exactly what I just read here I'm like dang look at me I'm not uh uh-uh that's not good that's what I'm doing but you got to be honest with yourself and say hey I'm doing a lot of these things it's different if you read a list like that or you're reading um, in like a self-help book or whatever, and you see maybe a couple of things that apply, then you say, okay, this is an area I need to fix it, you know? But when you see a lot, it's kind of hard and it can also make us feel like bad. Um, I've had that reaction before where I've read something about myself and been like, whoa, this is a really bad personality trait that I have. Like, I am like driving people away from me, you know, when I act this way. But you have to just be honest and say, hey, look, you know, we are all doing that. We are all doing that. Nobody is perfect. Okay. Now that's not an excuse to say, oh, well, everybody's doing that. No, you stop and you say, how do I work on this? You know, and you're never going to do it exactly perfect. But again, in conjunction with, you know, mental health awareness month, just being aware then it's like, okay, I'm tripping. I need to reassess. I need to figure out some ways that I can help me kind of keep that balance and minimize some of the negatives so that they don't start to outshadow all of my positive qualities. Because even like the most flaming narcissists, there are some good parts to them. Everybody has good parts to them, okay? You know, so you can't completely be down on yourself if some of these, you know, um, fit. We just learn, we move on and we grow. That's it. That's all we can do. We're just humans after all. Okay. Okay, ladies. So I hope that you have found this episode on covert narcissism. Those narcissists that kind of hide and jump out and be like, I never saw that coming. What happened? Or maybe it's you, you know, sometimes I've done some of these on these lists. Okay. So um, I hope you enjoy. Please leave any feedback on um, any of my outlets and I'll see you in the next episode.